say, I'm not fine with just the normal. Right. All right. I'm not fine with <laughs> just seeing what I've always seen. Let me tell you, this is Azusa Street. Just a few months ago, back in March, I listened to an audio book of the first-hand experiences of the t teens and young adults at Azusa Street. But them telling their personal stories of what they saw in their accounts that they had. They all accounted that for three years straight, the manifest Shekinah glory cloud of God rested in that place. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. They said there was miracles where people get out of stretchers, get out of wheelchairs. My personal favorite is a man came in with his arm, it was amputated or it was severed, something had happened, there was an accident, they prayed for him, and his arm grew back. Amen. I've never seen a miracle like that, but I'm hungry and I'm determined that one day I will see it. I will see a severed limb grow back from it. They saw, brought in a woman on a stretcher. She had third degree burns all over her body. They prayed for her. When she left, she left with completely new skin. Hallelujah. Amen. The young uh, the children and the young adults would go up to people with no teeth in their mouth. They would put a finger on their bare gum and say, in Jesus' name, and teeth would begin to rise out of their mouth. I'm not fine with what I've always seen. I'm not fine with even what they saw at Azusa Street because there's greater that is in store. I want to see those things, but I want to go above and beyond what they saw. I want to see greater than what they saw. I'm not comfortable with just having potential, with just talking about what they... I don't want to just hear about the second-hand experiences, but I want to see it for myself. I want to see revival for myself. I want to see a harvest of lost souls for myself. I've got to do something. I can't just stand back, stand by as the greatest revival known to mankind. I have to put my hand to the wall and do something. Because at the end of the day, the only thing that will matter is the work we did for the kingdom. Amen. I want to be a part of it. I want to see you. You don't stand in I want to call my dad. There is a call in this place for greater. There is a divine hunger for greater. There is a call for the supernatural. Let me tell you, with any great move of God, there was consecration. William Seymour, it's estimated, he prayed seven hours a day. With We're not, you know, trying to compare ourselves amongst ourselves or anything. We're to, and we know it's not about hours, it's about quality, not quantity. But we saw a great move of God that happened when a man consecrated himself. Yes. I want more. I want to see revival. But I've been learning lately that in order to see greater manifestations of the move of God, it starts with first the wells of personal devotion being broadened and deepened. Hallelujah, Jesus. You want to see greater miracles, Lord, call me on an extended fast. Yes. You want to see more people filled with the Holy Ghost, yeah. Lord, give me greater capacity to pray longer, to pray more. You want... Hallelujah, Jesus. When it comes to financial blessings, we read the story of Abraham. When Abraham made the sacrifice to leave his kindred and his country, then it talks about Abraham's wealth. There was a sacrifice that had to be given in order for the treasuries to be unlocked. Yes, Lord. Come on. 
there is consecration and obedience. Hallelujah, and in here tonight, there are miracles that are going to be poured out. I speak it to you in Jesus' name. That if in here, if you need the Holy Ghost, you can receive it tonight. Yes, yes. yes. But first, the Lord is wanting to see who is going to respond to the call of the supernatural. Who is not comfortable with being where they've always been, just seeing what we've always seen, just having church slapping our fives and moving on. But God, I want more. If that's you, if you want greater, I wonder if you would step out of your seats at this time. If you come around this altar, if you just lift up your hands and say, God, whatever I've got to do, whatever you want me to do, I want more. Lord, I'm not fine with being where I've always been, but God, I want more. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead and just lift up your hands, lift up your voice. God, I don't want just a once in a lifetime ministry. I don't want a once in time ministry, Lord. Lord, I want to do great things for you, God. I want greater in store for me, Jesus. Oh, my God. 
said obedience is better than sacrifice yes. sometimes yes. we're so quick to say and I, again I'm not downing yes. anyone's sacrifice yes. don't take it like that but we're yes. so quick to give a bigger offering we're so quick to make these big sacrifices to us but really God is saying I want the sacrifice I want you to do is to step out of your comfort zone and go witness to that person yes. All right. The thing you don't want, you see, when it comes to being eager, yes, it'll hurt your pocketbook to give, but we're eager to give that sacrifice. But when it comes to stepping out of our comfort zone, when it comes to doing things our flesh really doesn't want to do, that's when we're stepping into the dimension of the miraculous. That's when we're stepping in, and God, it has to be you. When you're willing to witness to someone at the Walmart, you're willing to pray early in the morning like you never have before. You're willing to pass longer than you ever have before. Let's not be complacent and comfortable just because many of us were wondering what sacrifice do I have to give up now? What more do I have to give up? Stop thinking about sacrifice. Start thinking obedience. That's all I have to do now. If the Lord gives me an unction to go pray for someone at the Walmart or their gas station, follow that unction. Because you won't have to give five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars as nice as that is. You follow those unctions, people will be saved, the church will expand, and the Lord can take care of the rest. So I want everyone to lift up our hands. Right now, Jesus, I pray God that our eyes would be open and our ears would be sensitive to your voice. Yes, Lord, I pray that you would take away any excuse for us to say we do not hear your voice. Lord, let your voice be blaringly loud, louder than we ever it has ever been, God. And Lord, if we can't hear your voice, speak to us the things we need to lay down to hear your voice more clearly. Lord, our hunger is to be in intimacy with you, to have a relationship with you, Jesus. Lord, let us be obedient to your voice, Jesus. 
Let us follow the path of obedience. Right now, I want us to just, and there is a heavy presence of God in this place. Someone in here, there's someone in here who's sick. And there's someone else you know about their sickness and you've been battling within yourself to go pray for them. You're feeling the unction, but there's fear. I'm telling you right now to be obedient to that unction of the spirit. If you know that there's an ailment and you feel the unction to go pray for them, go lay hands and pray for them. Pray that the miraculous would happen through them. In fact, if you are in here right now and you need a miracle, lift up your hands. You need a miracle, you need a healing in your body. If you see someone with their hand up, go ahead, go lay a hand on them. Begin to speak the word of faith over them. Begin to speak healing over them. By the authority of the word of God and by the power of the name of Jesus. I bind up the spirit of infirmity. And right now I speak healing virtue begin to flow. Right now in the name of Jesus. All pain, all ailment, all disease get out right now. In Jesus' name. Right now, in the name of Jesus, healing virtue, living in the world, right now. Healing virtue. I rebuke infirmity. Get out right now, in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. We need you, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. Joy is being restored to some of you right now. I rebuke the spirit of depression. I rebuke sleepless nights. Breaking right now in the Holy Ghost. Freedom right now in Jesus' name. Joy that you haven't had since you were a child that you thought was long gone. That you thought was long gone. Restored right now. Joy right now in the name of Jialabahashi Peace right now. Even in the midst of trouble, I rebuke anxiety. I rebuke depression. I rebuke suicidal thoughts right now. I command it to get out right now in the name of Jesus. Jesus. I rebuke condemnation. Thoughts of the past, past guilt and mistakes. I command it to leave right now. It's under the blood of Jesus. Some of you are feeling God's presence right now. That is the love of God. God is wrapping his fatherly arms around some of you right now. Yes, Lord. Jesus. Greater is here. 
greater is he. It's like right now. It's like the Lord, or let's say you, you knew if I invested this much money into something in one year, I'm going to make triple the return. You know it for a fact. It's just you're waiting for that deposit. And that's there's that potential that's in this place. But the Lord is saying, I'm waiting on your deposit. I'm waiting for you to make the step. Greater is here, but now it's up to you. It's in your hands. Time. I want us to lift up our hands, to lift up our voice. Let's just praise and worship God a little bit longer. Let's go a little bit deeper right now. for you. The grace of God is still reaching for you. Hallelujah. God's looking for somebody to step up from just a receiving relationship to a giving relationship. Somebody needs to step up into your calling and quit just coming to church to get something from God. But you need to be a giver. You need to give to somebody else. You need to be a minister. You need to let God use you in a different level. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. 
Hallelujah. In the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit. Hallelujah. Upon all flesh. Your young men are going to see visions. Your old men are going to dream dreams. I'm not just going to pour it out on the name people. I'm going to pour it out on my handmaidens. I'm going to pour it out on servants. I'm going to pour it out on people of low status. I'm going to use whoever will. I'm going to use the greatest ability is availability. I'm going to use whoever's available. I'm going to use whoever says, God, here I am. Use me, Lord. I may not be much. I may not be uh, from a family with a pedigree, but God, I'm willing to do something for you. God, I'm willing to work. God, I'm willing to go beyond my comfort zone. I'm willing to stretch God. God is stretching some people. God is stretching some ministries. God is stretching uh, some callings. God is stretching. Well, I only believed God for this in my life. But God said, can you believe me for greater? Can you believe me for a little bit more? Can you believe me to do more than you ever thought possible within your life? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Brother Gwindu. What a wonderful on time word from the Lord. Yes, amen. Greater is here. Somebody needs to know that it's more than just greater is in the atmosphere, but somebody needs to claim that greater is here. Yes. Greater is here. Greater is he that is here within me. Hallelujah. Not he that's on the outside. He used to write on tablets of stone, but he said, no, I'm going to write on the soft, fleshy parts of your heart. Greater is he that is in me, within me, than he that is in the world. Somebody needs to get an understanding of who you are and whose you are. Understand that God lives inside of me. And when I walk somewhere, the authority of God goes with me. The anointing of God goes with me. The giftings of God goes with me. And oh, I wish somebody would get the faith of God to understand that anything is possible when Jesus is here. We understand that in church, but do you realize when you walk into an environment, you change the atmosphere. If you are plugged into the Spirit of God, if you are operating in what God has placed within you, you change the atmosphere for the good, for the positive. Why do you think the enemy fights you so hard and wants to keep you inside your house? Because he knows you change things. Jesus is a change agent. He is the catalyst. He is the change agent in any environment that you walk into. It's amazing to me that we can't recognize who we are, but devils everywhere recognize who we are. We can't recognize who we are, but backsliders everywhere see us from afar off and they run from us because they can feel the power of God on our life. They can feel the anointing and they're, they're, they don't want that conviction. There's no condemnation right. to them that are in Christ Jesus, but they don't want that conviction. Right. Approaching them. Bishop talked about he didn't even know why. He didn't know that the, the milkman in his neighborhood, when they would deliver the little milk jars to your door, he didn't know the milkman was full of the Holy Ghost. He just knew every time he saw that man, there was something different about that man. And he would run around the block to get away from that man because there was something different. But when he had an encounter with God, and God drew him as a young lad at 14 years old into a Pentecostal church, and he was there, he said, saw the milkman up there praying for him to get the Holy Ghost. He knew there was something different. Amen. Why do we keep trying to be the same as the world when we're already marked by God and targeted right. by the devil? Yes. Spiritual warfare happens when we walk somewhere whether we understand it or not. If we ever knew who we are exactly. in God, Exactly. Whose we are. We're not who we used to be. Amen. Thank you. We're marked. Yes. Huh. Thank you, Jesus. Does anybody say, you know what? I want to win a soul this year. Yes. yes. I want to. Yes. 
God can use you to teach Bible studies. There, there's 20 soul Bible study teachers in this church. You just haven't stepped into it yet. You haven't realized how good you are going to be when God starts channeling what you know through your mouth and letting you get the boldness to go out and teach somebody. I'm going to tell you what. We, we we're going to be like Pontiac, Michigan. We're going to have a smoking section somewhere on some pews that you've won. Two pews full of people that are full of the Holy Ghost because uh, you stepped into your calling. Yes, Jesus. We've got to go from this posture to this posture. I'm not just coming to receive God, but yes. I'm coming to give. I'm not just coming for it to all about be about me. I'm not like a hamster on a wheel just cycling through my sins. No, it's the will of God that I'm giving out everywhere I go. That it is flowing out of my life. That everywhere I go, something splashes on somebody. And they go, oh my goodness, what is it about you? Why is it when you're in the classroom, I feel something different? Why is it when you're on the job, I feel something different? Why is it when you're in my yard, I feel something different? Or when you're walking the neighborhood, there's something different about you. Amen. And then we can step up and say, oh, if you only knew where I was before Jesus touched me. Right. See, why you feel something different is because I've just been with Jesus. And he wants to be with you right now. Not a respecter of persons. Amen. He just respects the condition of the person's heart. Whether you're open to receiving from him. Jesus couldn't even do many miracles in Nazareth because of their unbelief. Exactly. If you go somewhere and you plant a seed and you see it's rocky ground and you're rejected, the Bible doesn't say stay there, have a vacation for six months, have a pity party party of one and stay there and be depressed. No, it says you shake your feet off, you move somewhere else, even if you got to go to the next town over. You go, you move your feet, you dust your feet off, you go over. Why? Because we don't have time to, to just waste our energy or waste our time. We don't have that kind of time anymore. We have got to go. Somebody rejects us. God bless you. Have a great day. Here's a peppermint. I'm moving on to somebody else. Uh, somebody else is going to be hungry. Somebody else is desperate for this truth. Somebody else is wanting this gospel in their life. Yes. Amen. Amen. Greater is here. It's not tomorrow. It's not next year. It's not the year after that. God's going to do things in this church this year that will blow our minds. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Say, well, I don't believe that. Well, you might be like the man that stood there and doubted what the prophet of God said, and he said, you're going to, you're going to see it happen, uh, but, but, you, but you're going to, you're going to get trampled over in the middle of the gates when the people are running toward yeah. the promise. Uh, you, you're going to see it. You're going to be there on the day it happens. Uh, but you're not going to partake of it. I don't want to be that kind of Christian. I want to be the one that says, God, let me be on the front row of what you're doing. Let me be the one that's right there saying, oh, hallelujah. I might not be the one instigating, but let me get the bottle of water for the one that are. Lord, let me be there whenever you do what you're going to do. I want to be there. I want to see it. I want to partake of it. I want to be able to be one that I said I saw it for myself. And you can't tell me what God can't do. God wants to blow up Watson, Louisiana and explode it. God doesn't want there to be enough seating. God wants to blow up Deliverance Tabernacle. God wants to blow up Lee Road. God wants to blow up some of these other churches. Why? Because it is time for revival. It is time for the harvest because we don't have much time Amen. left. Amen. Brother Gwindu, as he said, has got uh, a couple of books back there. He's got the, the journal and then he's also got the, the companion book that's there. And I, we've already got one. My wife and I have already got one of each. So we're going to have it for the library, Sister Diane, that's getting ready to get uh, get off the ground here pretty soon. We're in the, in the middle of working on that, uh, getting our library done. We got Sister Brenda's class. Now we just got to rotate things out and get the library done. Uh, we got, uh, I think, a young man this week. I think Brother Alex is going to be up here a little bit, uh, moving some stuff over uh, this week uh, for the church. Yes, I just volunteered him. Um, but but we're, we're moving things. Why? Because God's on the move. We can't afford yeah. to be sitting and be lazy. No, we're going to be moving because God is on the move. Amen. And now is our time. Not tomorrow. Now right. is our time. Right. We're going to be having a great, a great move of the Lord. Sister Trent is working right now on making 
shirts for the church. We're going to have Deliverance Tabernacle shirts. Uh, and we're only charging, I think, a couple of three dollars more than what we're, the cost is uh, for her to make them. Uh, why? Because we want to see shirts all over the place. I want to see shirts. Uh, I want to see it at Walmart. I want to see it everywhere. Why? Because we're wanting to let them know that there is a, 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 a God who is greater and He is here. And He's moving in our behalf. Hallelujah. I just want to say also, I just give a shout out that uh, Brother Watson is going to be having on the 21st, isn't it, uh, Brother Watson? Uh, Brother Robert Martin, um, is that the 21st of this month? Brother Evangelist Robert Martin, a great uh, man of God, used to be the uh, superintendent of the ALJC, uh, general superintendent of the ALJC, a phenomenal preacher. He's going to be in Watson, Louisiana. You start at 10, Brother brother uh, Stewart, uh, starts at 10 o'clock. It's going to be on the 21st. I know I'm planning on making it over there, and I believe I'm bringing Alex and and probably Jordan, whoever wants to go, uh, just get with us uh, with Brother Terry or Sister Sandy or, or my wife and I. Uh, we, we're planning on going and showing up and, and having and supporting our brothers and our sisters. That That's the will of God. We don't need to be just in our four walls. God's doing stuff all over the place. And we need to support each other and bless each other. And I'm excited about what God's going to do there. Um, don't forget, October the 30th, we're hosting the Save Our Children um, uh, rally that's here. It's going to be geared toward children. If you've got little children, they're going to have bouncy houses out there. They're going to have children's evangelists. I don't know uh, exactly which one. I don't think it's been determined, uh, but they're probably going to have puppets. They're probably going to have a, uh, they may be dressed up as a clown. They get goofy and they get crazy down on the children's level. Right. So they're going to be here on um, the, the 30th of the month, uh, the 30, uh, 30th and then the 31st, they're going to be in the West Bank at Brother Sarge's church. So they're going to do it one time on the North Shore for our section, section 12, and one time on the South Shore over at Brother Sarge's church in Marrera on the 31st. Amen. Yeah, Brother Stewart. Uh, it's a little, uh, October 16th is a Sunday. It's going to be a special start time of 1030, but our Louisiana District Superintendent, Brother Weber, is going to be with us ministering that morning. October the 16th. You might want to put that on your calendar. If you've never heard Brother Weber preach, I, I'm going to tell you, I'm very thankful. God has given us superintendents that are just top shelf in every level. And Brother Weber, he can preach the paint off a wall. That man can preach. And God has used it. He has a great anointing. When you step up in things in God, God gives you an anointing for every level where you are. And God ordains Brother Weber to be our superintendent. He was the first superintendent we've ever had that made it on the first nomination. Didn't even have to go to the second ballot. That's the first time. Our bylaws say if it's not, I think, greater than 50%, it's got to be voted on again. He had more than 50% on the first time. That's a God thing. That's never happened. Brother Tenney didn't even get that. You know? So he, God has positioned him for such a time as this. Yes. Ask that you continue to pray for uh, ministry. Pray for your pastors. Pray for anybody that's doing something for God. You know that the enemy's targeting them and, and fighting against them. Pray for them because when you pray for them, God not only blesses them, but he turns around and blesses you too. Amen. Amen. The Bible said if you give a prophet a, a cup of water, you get a prophet's reward. Amen. God gives that back to you. They're, they're, that's a blessing when you're praying for people. God bless you. I know you're tired, you're weary in your body, but hasn't the Lord been good in this place? Amen. Can we just lift our hands one more time and thank Him for what He's done? We love you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We magnify your name, God. We're so thankful for you, God. We ask as we are dismissed from this place, God, that you would send us out, God, as missionaries into the community, God. Send us out as evangelists into the community. Send us out as prophets of God into the community and let us win somebody. Lord God, let us bubble over this week. Put somebody in our path, God, that needs what we have, God, and use us for your glory, God. In the name of Jesus, Tuesday night, there will be uh, service here at the regular time at 715. Please come uh, ready to, to give the Lord a sacrifice of praise. Be ready to get something from the Lord, to have some good teaching uh, and, and to receive something from the Lord. Next week is Mission Sunday. 
uh, bring your checkbook, your pocketbook, your your neighbor's purse, their Louis Vuitton. No, no, don't don't grab their neighbor's purse. Bring them with their purse uh, uh, to come be a blessing to missions. Uh, this church has been given more and more in missions, and God is blessing us because of that. Amen. 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 You're dismissed in the fear of the Lord. Uh, there may be some. I know there's still uh, curry coffee. cups back there. There's coffee. You can go get a cup of coffee. Go do some fellowship and. God bless you. We love you in Jesus' name.